And back at it with the Real Money Show. The number anytime to contact the guys and get started. No problem. One eight seven seven eight silver. Again, one eight seven seven eight silver would be the way. Twenty five thousand dollar gold. That is going to be upcoming a little later on. If you want to know what that is all about, you've got to listen to this entire show. This is like something they've never talked about before, guys. You haven't even told me where that's coming from, but I'm dying to hear about it. We'll get to that in uh, in just a little while. Paul, Jeremy, how are you guys? We're doing great. Thank you. How are you doing? I am. Uh, I'm doing excellent. I'm really curious about that headline I just threw out there. What's uh, What's going on in that regard? I know We're you guys not want to get tell to that, you. but there's so much more to uh, so much more to it, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we'll get we'll get to that a little later in the show. Um, first, we did have um, as you know, we had a, a contest on Twitter to win a 10 ounce bar of silver Royal Canadian Minch, Mint. Um, that product's actually in. Uh, uh, stark supply right now. Uh, but Christine Harrison from Edmonton, Alberta, she won the 10 ounce uh, Royal Canadian Mint Silver Bar. So congratulations to her. And she won that simply by retweeting the post at the top of our Twitter account. Um, Twitter Brilliant. account is at Guildhall WM. And it's a great place to see what we're up to at Guildhall as well as uh, updates in the market, which we're going to get to right now. So um, this week, uh, John, was was uh, interesting action in, in the precious metals. Uh, we did see uh, some weakness both in gold and silver, and then we saw a good comeback. We're taping the show on Thursday, so we don't know what we're headed into for the last day of the week. But one thing was for sh- was for certain it was China's Golden Week, which is yeah. a holiday where the precious metals markets are closed for an entire week, and that tends to create a demand vacuum. So it is typical this time of year at some point, whether it's end of end of September, early October, where we see some sort of pullback like what we saw in both precious metals. So there was some great buying opportunities below $1,500 an ounce on gold and a little bit uh, in the low $17 range on silver. Um, again, both metals have bounced off their lows and uh, are trading quite well. And uh, we'll have to see if if we're seeing the that continuation or if we do get another opportunity to buy on the dips. Well, there was a pullback on gold at $1,460. As we're taping the show on Thursday, uh, we hit a high of actually 15, almost 1520 today. Um, we're trading right now in the 1510 range. Uh, silver's uh, around about 1765. Um, that also came back to around about 1680. So we've moved up almost a dollar on silver in the last two, three days. And on gold, uh, we've moved up around about $60, uh, $58. And, you know, a nice move up. Uh, again, this was due to some of the reports that came out on the U.S. market. And again, we don't really, you know, we talk about what happens in the U.S. quite a lot because it does affect us here in Canada. But the same thing as the jobless claims were up actually 4,000 uh, in the U.S. Um, and I don't think it's, it's really hit the tip of the iceberg because, you know, there is so many store closings in the States. Up to September, there was more store closings than there was in the whole of 2018. There are a lot of these store closings. People get severance pay. You know, if they've been at a job 10 years, 15 years, they're not going to get a week severance. They're going to get, you know, a pretty good package. And if they can't find a job, they're not, they can't go on unemployment because they've still got this severance package going. Hmm. Yeah. So that's yep. not, a, you know, allowed. And then we look at, you know, this week as well. You know, uh, since September the 15th, the GM workers, they've been on strike uh, in several states, you know, in several states in the U.S. There's 46,000 people. Uh, that belong to the labor union that are on strike. And this doesn't only affect, you know, the, the in Michigan and Ohio, manufacturing that work with GM in manufacturing parts. So it's a trickle-down effect. So 46 pe- 46,000 people go on strike. There could be another 50,000 jobs, 100,000 jobs affected that these people are going to have to go on unemployment because if you're not shipping goods, you can't keep the doors open. Yeah, I think that you are definitely seeing, especially in the U.S., a slowdown in manufacturing. Um, I think the numbers are really weak right now, um, some of the weakest since 2009. There was an interesting article this week, Paul, uh, on CNBC 
uh, the title was The Bull Market is Losing One of Its Most Powerful Backers. And what are they talking about? Buybacks. Corporate buybacks. Buybacks uh, in 2018 reached a trillion dollars. And wow. uh, the slowdown is definitely an ominous sign for uh, slowing growth uh, as well as the escalating trade war. And I think that plays into what you were talking about, severance packages. It's easy to pay a severance package if you're buying back stock or you're getting low interest rates. Um, which companies are still participating? We've got Apple, Bank of America, and JP Morgan are still buying back stock. So perhaps their stocks are, are still going to be going higher. But um, the other thing we'll have to see is if the lower interest rates, central banks are lowering interest rates, is that going to participate, precipitate more buybacks or is this just an opportunity for them to, to pay off the debt? Well, it's cheaper money. There's a 90% chance, by the way, that the Fed will cut rates in October. And that could be a quarter or half a point. But if you look at buybacks, what does it actually do? It takes the stock away from the public. There's less stock for people to buy. So then people get in looking for yield into other areas like IPOs. And again, there's been a couple of IPOs that have gone right down the tube. Well, we have an analyst that we're going to talk about in the precious metals market in the next segment that talks about when that money starts to leave the stock market and real estate, what that could potentially do to the precious metals. And we'll get to that, guys, after a short break. Uh, the number anytime, one eight seven seven eight silver Again, guildhallwealth.com, one eight seven seven eight silver is the way you want to contact uh, and start investing today. Reminder, $25,000 gold. We're going to get to that here in just a little bit, so stay tuned. Lots more Real Money Show is on the way. This is Global News Radio. And back with more Real Money Show to reach out, one eight seven seven eight silver Again, one eight seven seven eight silver guildhallwealthcom And a reminder, investing your RSP for every 5000 U.S. invested, you get a gram of gold. So take advantage of that uh, right away. And $25,000 gold, what is that all about? We're going to get to that very shortly, guys. And I know you want to talk about an article. And I know, Paul, just before we uh, we went to break the first time, you mentioned jobless uh, jobless uh, claims in the States. Well, I, I read this week, even here in Canada, 2000 people 44 stores forever 21 closing down so yeah you're right on the mark man stuff's closing down it's not looking good in that regard right well we've been talking about this for quite some time and yep. uh, you know they say that you know people are not going to retail stores they're buying everything on the internet I don't think it's really the case the internet is the way to go t to find the lowest price uh, and it's a you know it's a race to the bottom and you, you're going to probably see some of these internet companies as well, you know, take a powder, in my opinion, because you can't keep selling at no profit. And that's why, you know, you see these IPOs coming to, to market uh, and they're not making any money, yet they're raising incredible amounts. I mean, it's air in a box. It's nothing. It's vaporware. So, you know, that's why we have the Real Money Show. We sell gold, silver, um, natural fancy color diamonds. These are hard assets. Um, and, you know, when you start to see the stock market, when we're talking about buybacks in the last segment, when you're buying back stock, companies are buying back stock because the interest rates are so low, that leaves no stock for the public to buy. They have to get into, you know, looking for yield. They, you know, you're not getting any returns at the bank. You get more returns taking bottles back to Max Milk. I mean, it's just not there. So, you know, when companies buy back, it hurts everybody. One eight seven seven eight silver is a number to uh, get a hold and start investing again. Guildhallwealth.com. Jeremy, what uh, what else is going on, pal? So I wanted to take a look at this article from Bob Kirtley uh, from Seeking Alpha, where he talks about uh, the title is "Explosive Silver Prices Will Be Mind Boggling." It's a pretty interesting article. We'll put it in our newsletter this week. And essentially what he's what he's talking about is that, uh, you know, we've talked in the past about the gold-silver ratio. And he was saying how back in July, the, the ratio actually reached a high of 95 to 1. And since then, silver has sprung to life and, and it traded from a low of 1450 to a high of 1950 within four months, which is a massive gain in the market. Today we're trading, yep. I think, in the mid-17 range. So the ratio right now stands around 83 to 1. Now, if we look at, uh, now, Kirtley looks at the average of the ratio, saying the average has been about 60 to 1. And uh, that's just the average. So if gold reaches 1500, which is what many analysts expect, some by the end of the year, uh, the 60 to 1 ratio, or the average, would put silver in around $25.
Now, if the average were to go back to the historic norm, which is 16 to 1, at $1,500 gold, that puts you at $94 an ounce silver. Jeez. So the average 60 to 1 puts us at 25 without gold going a single dollar higher than 15 uh, if we hit the historic norm, it would go to basically $100. So what uh, Kirtley looks at for what is basically driving the bull market right now is exactly one of, well, one of them is exactly what we talked about already, which is a long overdue recession. The fact that the markets look toppy, retail's closing, employment's rising, manufacturing's going down. It's, we're clearly headed towards a recession. Plus, you have the inverted yield curve where it pays you more to buy short-term than long-term debt. And zero Zero interest rates. Zero interest rates, negative interest rates, but obviously that lead, that's, a, that's a, a symptom of the demise of money or, or fiat currencies, I should say. So that's so on the currency side, central banks driving interest rates low, negative. Um, European Central Bank reintroducing QE. The Fed pumping into what has what will amount to hundreds of billions of dollars into the repo market. Um, so that's a major black swan that we should be keeping our eye on. And then again, we've had we're, we are headed in towards a recession. We've had ten years plus of recovery. Uh, markets look toppy. The buybacks are stopping. You know, where do we go from here? So the scene will be an exodus from stocks, bonds, and real estate into precious metals. So what Kirtley wants to, to emphasize here is that the precious metals market is a very, very small market. So even a small allocation in precious metals could have a big impact on your portfolio. Uh, and again, that's coming from Bob Kirtley from Seeking Alpha. And he also very much believes that silver will accelerate faster than gold so that silver should be something that is given a lot of consideration. So well, what do you think, Paul? Well, the, you know, silver is a precious metal, but it's also an industrial metal. And the silver, uh, the amount of silver hoarding uh, or stockpiling has actually disappeared. So what's traded every day is futures and options, which is paper. Um, right now, the Royal Mint is back ordered on shipping 100 ounce bars, 10 ounce bars we haven't seen for two months. I don't think they're even making them any right well, now. Well, you know, they're making Superman coins or whatever they make uh, for the 2020. Um, that's their main business is to be able to sell other coins other than 100 ounce bars, 10 ounce bars, 1 ounce and uh, 1 ounce gold maples. Um, but there is a shortage. And in some some of the cases, the spreads of where it used to be 40 cents, 50 cents spread has gone up to as much as 80 cents spread. Yeah, I think that's interesting that even though the prices aren't um, fantastically higher, we've seen good moves so far this year, but we're seeing premiums rise on the metal because of the shortage of supply. So you have low price, shortage of supply, stock market really toppy, recession looming, a very small market about to become very explosive. I guess that's maybe partly, maybe why there's a potential for gold to go to 25,000, and we'll talk about that later. Yeah, but it, again, it's, a, it's all about stockpiling is gone. You know, gold and silver, there is all, this, all the gold that's ever been mined is still above ground, uh, whether it's in jewelry, whether it's in coins. And in actual fact, if you took all the gold, uh, it would just about fill the Ar Arc de Triomphe, and that's how much gold there is in the world. So silver is being used up. It's used in every manufacturing that goes out today. So this is a great opportunity to buy gold and silver at, I think, a bargain basement prices. One eight seven seven eight silver is that number. Guildhallwealth.com online to start investing. And remember, RSP room for every 5,000 invested U.S. in RSP. Through Guildhall, you get a gram of gold as well. We're going to talk about how to purchase and how to get right into this acquiring product directly with Guildhall Wealth. That is on the way after a short break on The Real Money Show, Global News Radio. And back with more Real Money Show. You know the number, one eight seven seven eight silver guildhallwealthcom And as far as RSPs are concerned and registered accounts for every $5,000 U.S. invested, you will get a gram of gold. Uh, Jeremy, Paul, we know you guys do RSPs, RIFs, uh, lifts, Liras. You do the registered accounts. Uh, you do all kinds of different ways to acquire the gold. Uh, how about buying direct? How does that work? Yeah, so um, buying direct is something that's pretty easy with Guildhall. Uh, we deal in um, basic bullion products, and clients can come to us direct and simply put physical product in their hands. So they don't necessarily have to 
you know, do a registered account or do a financed account or, you know, be a large client that's looking to store physical product, they can certainly just get started with Guildhall and, and get some physical in their hand. So who should be buying direct, really? Uh, we see a lot of people who are new to the investment who are buying direct. I think that's a great way to start because it puts a little bit of physical in your hand and you get a sense of what this market is really all about. And also a lot of times people, uh, you know, they need to, to see that physical, hold it in their hand, get a sense of, okay, how is this different than my typical investments? Because this isn't really necessarily an investment, it's real money. But um, I would say definitely new investors would definitely benefit from having a little bit of physical in their hand. And then you get the sophisticated investor that understands that at Guildhall we offer through our e-store, you can get guildhallwealth.com, you can buy physical product, you can have it shipped to you, um, whether it's bars or coins. We also have available, as I said, for the sophisticated investor that knows that it, when you're buying you know, silver, for example, a 100 ounce bar weighs seven pounds. So if you were buying 5,000 ounces of silver, you've got 350 pounds worth of silver, give or take a few pounds. Um, you don't want to be putting that under the bed. Uh, you don't want to be burying it in the back garden. It's too hard to put into a safe deposit box. You need to put it into a safe, secure, yeah. allocated, segregated account in a depository, which we offer. We also offer, as we said, the registered accounts, whether it's RSPs, TFSAs, Liras, all types of registered accounts, where you can put gold and silver. And when you put $5,000 US into the account, we give you one gram of gold up to 10 grams. So if you're putting in $50,000, you'd get 10 grams of gold, which helps with any types of fees that come along or as we're doing this and opening the account. And the final thing that we actually offer is allocated finance, where you're buying the same physical silver, but instead of, you know, if you're example, if you're buying 1,000 ounces, 10, 100 ounce Royal Canadian Mint bars, instead of putting up, you know, approximately eighteen, nineteen thousand dollars $19,000 US, uh, in Canadian, you're putting up around about $9,000. You still control the same 10, 100 ounce bars. You have, it's financed. It's no shuttle against you. Um, it's allocated to you. You get the bar numbers. Uh, you can pay the debt off any time you want. But the difference is with silver being, you know, around about 1750, 1760, for you to double your money, if you bought a thousand ounces of silver, it would have to go to $35. By buying a thousand ounces of silver, you're putting up around about seven thousand dollars U.S., nine thousand, ten thousand dollars Canadian. You know, silver has to move up seven dollars, and you've doubled your money. Five thousand ounces in the market, you're going to make thirty-five thousand dollars with a seven-dollar move. Ten thousand ounces in the market, you're going to make seventy thousand dollars. Now you have to remember, in 2011, we hit high of fifty dollars, and it looks like these markets can go very, very high. And we're going to be talking about $25,000 gold in the upcoming segment. So if you see gold at $25,000, where do you think silver is going to be? Again, one eight seven seven eight silver the number to invest, guildhallwealth.com. Uh, as far as the actual products are concerned, you know, you can get, you get the best stuff. What is the type of stuff you should get? So I think if someone's looking to get invested in physical product or acquire it for the first time, um, you know, Paul mentioned earlier, I think in the last segment, that the world game and offers coins with, you know, Superman and different themes on them. Um, that product is great, but you are paying a very high premium for that product. So what, what we look for is, is uh, universal accepted premium products. Silver bars, ten silver bars, zero bars, one ounce bars, and gold. And you're looking for bars as opposed to coins because they're going to track the price closer. So there's a lower, a much lower premium on that, and therefore you're tracking the price. So if you want to take away the concept of numismatic and collectability, and go for the physical bars that are recognizable. Guildhall only does LBMA approved product, which is the London Bullion Market Association, and uh, these are the products that are most.
so you know get that first five ten percent and then you can have fun time in the market or cost averaging but i think you know in, in the, the fullness of time it's not really going to matter where you purchase you know if you look at the peaks in the market very few people bought at the actual peak where that would have been the only time you would be losing on it today just before we we got to take a, a quick break but uh, let me ask you this just give me a second on this one where do people go to buy so uh, we do have uh, our online store, GuiltHallPreciousMetals.com. You can go there, pick out your products. We ship for free on orders over uh, $1,000 an ounce. It comes fully insured, uh, shipping, tracking numbers available, uh, lots of different things. That it's going to be easy. We also do offer products uh, by appointment. So you can come to our offices and see the different types of products that we have and buy direct from us. Now that's by appointment only, but uh, you can certainly come here and uh, actual see and hold the product before you make a final decision. One eight seven seven eight silver the number, and again, guildhallwealth.com. And I've mentioned a couple times that we got into it in this particular segment as far as your RSP and uh, registered accounts are concerned. Every $5,000 U.S. will get you a gram of gold. $25,000 gold. We are going to get to that a little later on the show. Stick around for it. But uh, one of our favorite parts of the show is coming up in the, uh, the next segment, so hang on. Diamonds is where we're going to go on the Guildhall Wealth Show right here on Global News Radio. And more Real Money Show, one eight seven seven eight silver Love that number. Keep that number, one eight seven seven eight silver guildhallwealthcom RSP room, yeah, use it for uh, for precious metals, physical metals with Guildhall. Every $5,000 U.S. spent, uh, you get a gram of gold as well. Guys want to talk about diamonds. Uh, Paul, as always, has some special diamonds. Uh, Jeremy, he wants to talk about, but a couple articles you want to uh, machete your way through first, right? <laughs> yeah, there's been a couple of interesting things that came um, came out online in the okay. last couple of weeks, so I, I wanted to quickly get through that for our listeners to just get a sense of where the markets are at. So uh, there was a great article out on on uh, Reuters and um, based talking about Rio Tinto because of the because of the mine in Argyle being uh, about to close, and that's a Rio Tinto property. Yeah. Uh, so Rio Tinto, it says, uh, sees a rosy future for diamonds despite the end of Argyle. They're currently exploring mines in Canada, said uh, Arnaud Surratt, which is uh, Rio's chief executive for copper and diamonds. Now, he also said that pink diamonds have risen in price by 500% since 2000. And uh, Rebecca Forrester, who is the president of Alrosa, uh, which is a diamond producer, she said that the Argyle closure should closure should boost uh, the price for pink diamonds, obviously. Um, and you know the the white diamond market isn't doing so well right now. But uh, you know you have to understand that the low um, low demand for prices on white diamonds is one thing. But the color diamond market rarity and the rarity for natural fancy color diamonds of high mm -hmm. quality, the, that rarity plays such a huge, huge factor in putting a floor under prices. Um, there was another a pretty interesting article. You know, we've talked a lot on this show about individuality being expressed through natural fancy color diamonds, and that's what makes them so great right. for jewelry and for engagement. Well, there is an article from uh, Beth Bernstein in Forbes which said exactly that. Colored gemstones vibrantly signal the new wave of unconventional engagement rings. So that was a really interesting thing, and, and the article is about the growth of the alternative engagement ring, and uh, I'll just give you a quick quote from there. She wrote, in a time when the desire to be different than our peers and parents, close friends and coworkers, rule our choices in all categories of jewelry, we're drawn to engagement rings that are anything but conventional. Over the past 10 to 15 years, we've shifted towards more personalization in everything from the wedding destination to our preference in, in rings and have witnessed numerous changes on the part of imaginative, independent designers daring us to up the individuality quotient on the choices we make. During these years of the alternative engagement ring, diamonds have included new versions of old cuts such as rosé and cushion shapes and the reappearance of the marquees, baguettes, and pear shapes in innovative, in innovative settings. Natural colored diamonds have run the gamut of salt and pepper to opaque cognac, champagne, and black diamonds to more traditional canary and, and yellow. Yellow, canary, yellow, and pink. Wow. So, you know, this idea that it makes sense. You know, there's a glut in white diamonds. People aren't really buying them. And that also has to do with a newer generation of people who want to be different, want to express themselves right. um, individually. Um, and that's something we've talked a lot about 
putting that together into jewelry with with natural fancy colored diamonds. Now I will just say she mentions cognac, champagne, black. Yeah, those aren't investment grade. Those are just right. co- yes, they are colored diamonds, but you know. Pink and yeah. yellow, while more traditional, are much, much more expensive. And we have, um, we've taken actually some over one carat, 105, 111 uh, diamonds and in fancy internally flawless. We put them into beautiful settings. Uh, they're for around about just under $20,000. If you went downtown to Bloor Street or any one of those major stores, you'd be looking at $45,000 for the same thing. So if you're looking for an engagement ring, it's supposed to be, what, three months' salary? Yeah, um, that's what they say. You know, going downtown Bloor Street is a little bit more. Yeah. But <laughs> we have a terrific section, or you could come and pick out a diamond, and we can put it into any setting and manufacture it for you. Now, before we talk about a couple diamonds that you have there, Paul, um, JCK Online, August 19th, they wrote an article called It's the Right Time to Buy Natural Colored Diamonds. The quote from Eden Rachmanoff, who we've had on the show in the article, said, Despite the temporary psychological negative effect at the moment, the long-term price trend for natural colored diamonds looks positive. According to research by Knight Frank, within the last 10 years, the price of colored diamonds went up by 85%. That's all, that's all colored diamonds together, outperforming some classical luxury investment objects such as art and watches. Hmm. It's definitely a good time to buy colored diamonds, says Eden Rachmanoff. So if we- someone did want to get into that market... What would they look Absolutely. at? Absolutely. We've, we've got a matching pair, a 111 and a 112, fancy, vivid, internally flawless, a matching pair. Mm-hmm. They're just beautiful, beautiful diamonds. The two together are $80,000 Canadian. This would make a great investment if you've got a couple of kids and you know you're going to put them through university 10, 15 years down the road. This is going to be the way to go. Uh, it's an easy a- asset to hold. You can put it in a safe deposit box or somewhere safe and just sit and wait for the just the prices to increase because this is an, an incredible investment and one of the best kept secrets out there. And with the Argyle mine closing in 2020, pinks will become very scarce. Uh, and the Argyle produces 90% of the world's pinks. Vivid yellows will be the next pinks. And this is the time to get in and buy a yellow diamond. Could start with a phone call. Really, it's it's quite simple, guys. One eight seven seven eight silver again. One eight seven seven eight silver to call through. Go see the collection, as Paul always says. You don't pick the diamond; the diamond picks you. You can go to guildhallwealth.com dot com and uh, yeah, twenty five thousand dollar gold. If you've been scratching your head, going, "What are they talking about? When are they going to talk about it?" We're getting to it next. So stick around. Lots more real money show is on the way on Global News Radio. And back with more of the Real Money Show. The number one eight seven seven eight silver one eight seven seven eight silver guildhallwealth dot com RRSPs use that room to uh, get some precious metals, physical metals, into that account. And every five thousand dollars U.S. invested, you'll get a gram of gold. So, Jeremy, I've been teasing this all day long. So let's get into it. Twenty five thousand dollar gold. You're wetting my whistle, buddy. What does it all mean? <laughs> so um, this was an article put out by Kelsey uh-huh. Williams. He's the author of Inflation, What It Is, What It Is Not, and Who's Responsible For It, and a couple other other books and has a blog. So he wrote this article called Gold Forecast, Thoughts About $25,000 Gold. We've heard lots of targets of $10,000. It's become more and more normalized. Um, In the article right out the gate, he mentions Pierre Lassonde, who's a Canadian philanthropist and co-founder of Franco Nevada, and he says gold could hit $12,500 by 2049. And under the right conditions, it could go as high as 25000 So how does gold get to 25000 Well, first, let's talk about the timeline. In this article, they're basically timing it out to 2049 or 30 years from now, which mm-hmm. you may not want to wait 30 years for it. But I think how it gets there, the reasons why it gets there is the real important part of this article. And essentially what he's saying is, look, uh, the averages that we've seen in gold have been about 10% a year. And uh, if you take $1,500 an ounce per gold right now and add 10% a year out to 2049, you're at $25,000 an ounce. And uh, that's that's not going to be that crazy in the sense of if bread's going to cost you $50, $50 for a loaf, you're going <laughs> to need gold to go to $25,000 to keep your purchasing power. Um, now, he talks about something really interesting in the sense that um, looking at the most profitable periods for gold, and one of those big periods was, uh, the most profitable was the 30-year period 
between 1970 and 2000. Now, in 1970, gold was trading at $35 an ounce. The peak in 1980, it hit 850, and by 2000, it was trading at $280. So you're looking at this idea of the big, big gains were made in that first decade where it was averaging about 28% or something like okay. that. Yep. But what you end up with over time is this annualized return of 7%. And a next profitable uh, period was the 10-year period from 2001 through 2011 where the gold's annualized return was 22%. Wow. So this idea of getting the gains early and then coasting, right? If you right. were up 300, 400% on an investment and you just let it coast, even if it lost over time, you made so much on those gains that it lasted, right? right. This is without any manipulation of your own portfolio and tailoring it and pruning it, you know, to in terms of your holdings. This is just literally saying you bought it, you held it, where is it at today? Yeah, taking some profit off the table and buying back on the dips. Yeah. Now he says that one of the biggest mistakes people make is they have their expectation of higher prices um, based on an assumption of increasing demand, safe haven buying, these type of things. Um, so they have this idea that it will indicate more value and as a result they're investing in it. Um, he thinks that that is a, a big mistake to make in gold because gold is the original measure of value, he says. The price of gold in dollars tells us what the dollars are worth, not what oh. gold is worth what the dollars are worth. So the same thing would apply to the euro, the one, other currencies. Gold value is rock solid and stable and doesn't change. So what brings it to $25,000 an ounce? Well, devaluing currencies ultimately because an ounce of gold is an ounce of gold. But if that currency is worthless, so Zimbabwe dollar, uh, Venezuelan bolivars, uh, you know, Turkish US lira, US... 98% of what is lost in value in 100 years. Well, they talk exactly about that in this article. Um, you're going to have to go to our newsletter to get the rest and check it out. But when you're looking at it rationally, yeah, it's absolutely possible that gold could go to $25,000 in the next 30 years. Um, but it could certainly do $10,000 in a much shorter amount of time. Well, it's also the way if you say to somebody, well, you sell me your house for what you paid for it. And the answer is no, unless you're living in some place where you're underwater. And his last, ar his last line is, will you, sell, will you sell your gold for $1 billion of Monopoly money? Okay. <laughs> but well, gold and silver, natural fancy color diamonds is real money. Yeah. It's not vaporware. It's not Bitcoin. It's not air in a box. They are real. They're exchangeable. They're sellable. And it's liquid. You want to get your whole uh, hands on it too. It's it's actually quite simple. One eight seven seven eight silver is the number. Guildhallwealth.com. You have some uh, RSP inclination for every five thousand uh, dollars invested, you'll get a gram of gold, courtesy of Guildhall. We'll get into a, a wrap up and a summary as we get into more of the Real Money Show after a quick break right here on Global News Radio. And back with more Real Money Show, it is one eight seven seven eight silver If you don't know that number by now, write it down, one eight seven seven eight silver guildhallwealthcom If you have some RSP room, you can use that to uh, get some physical metals into your into your accounts and start uh, start building your wealth for every 5000 uh, U.S. invested. You'll get a gram of gold courtesy of Guildhall. Uh, what's the best investment, Paul? Straight up, what do you think? My opinion? A yep. TFSA. It's yeah. a tax-free saving account. The government is giving you $62,500 to invest without paying a nickel tax on any of the profit. Now, if we're talking about $25,000 gold in 30 years, you know, sixty two five dollars in gold is going to be a pretty sound investment. Don't you think, Jeremy? Yeah, we should probably do the math on that. Well, you're going to need a lot of paper and a lot of ink. <laughs> <laughs> but... Yeah, the TFSA to me makes a lot of sense. You can put silver or gold into that, that account, you know, um, and get started. Even if you don't have 62.5 or you've never invested before, you know, get something into an account that's tax-free. And, you know, it makes a lot of sense. So that would be, I did the math, it would be a little under 30 ounces of gold. I think like 27, 28 ounces. And uh, in 30 years, it would be worth 710000 my gosh. <laughs> right. 
that certainly would cover the the one one uh, percent cost of doing business. Yeah, right. But you know, speaking of that, yes, you do have to store the product. It is fully insured, and yeah, it's a physical, it's physical commodity. It's not paper. But uh, given the fact that we're trending towards negative interest rates, it's taking away that opportunity cost because you're saying, well. You know, if I put it in the bank, I lose one percent. If you're living in in Switzerland, um, you know, how long is that going to be before we have it in Canada? And then you say, well, I'd rather pay one percent a year and hold gold on the off chance it goes to twenty five thousand dollars an ounce. I, I can never fathom how somebody will put a hundred thousand dollars into a bond and take ninety nine thousand dollars in return. Fear. And if you're scared, if you're that scared of what what is out there that you want to be in cash that bad and lose, why wouldn't you go to the oldest safe haven out there, which yeah, is the gold? Central, central banks keep on printing more money. All they're doing is confiscating your money. Yeah, they just devalue it. Yeah, that's a, you know I I often get asked by people, well, what if what if Canada decides to confiscate your confiscate the gold, right? Because it's happened in the states uh, a few times actually, um, and my response is usually, well government's been confiscating your wealth through inflation for decades and you've never right. said anything and taxes you know you're, you've got such a and, and that that brings back the tfsa point because you're so up against it right you have the fact that a loaf of bread will be fifty dollars you know like i heard someone talking the other day it's sort of like the wealthy barber where it's well you know if you're young and you put away five thousand dollars a year you know by the time you retire you'll have five Seven hundred thousand dollars. Well, do you know what seven hundred thousand dollars is going to buy you in forty, fifty years? Nothing, at yeah. the rate we're going, unless there's a new financial system and things get back to some sort of semblance of normal. You know, I, I'm putting money away for my kids' education, and it really doesn't matter how much I put away right now. It's the same price today as it will be. Like ten thousand dollars now will be forty thousand dollars in fifteen, twenty years. So. I need an investment that is going to beat inflation consistently. And gold and silver have done that. We've averaged 9% a year for the last 20 years. Yeah, you know, at you the can end. always sell something.